For many years now, Russ and Craig have had many wide-ranging conversations with folks from all over the gaming world. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, man, I just got spit into the Dunkin' Donuts mm. from that, that storm. That's mm. that's a that's what we call a frog strangler out there. Mm. I'm having my Wait, third you, pumpkin muffin, Craig. You got to have oh, this pumpkin God, muffin. Oh, the my pumpkin God. Muffins. They're so good, oh, Craig. I'll tell Get you what. Before they're gone. <laughs> two days ago, I put my hand into a box of munchkins, okay? Yeah. And I didn't even look, and I popped one in my mouth, and it was a pumpkin munchkin. And all I could think was two things. Yuck! Bleh, no, and delicious. You. No, and you. That is delicious. Which is donuts generally right there. two things that usually go hand in hand. Anyway, <laughs> oh, so no, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. No, yeah. No. That is delicious. That is just out of hand with the pumpkin. But well, ironically enough, my son loves pumpkin. So well, there you see, go. he's a wise child. Uh, you know, he's, child. he's 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 one with the universe. He's understands he's a wild, his wild yeah, you know, you you got to respect the squash, Craig, or it will attack you. It's uh, something that's coming that's, for you. That's something. Got, the squash <laughs> is coming. The squash but, is coming, and but, it's uh, it's not a not a happy veg. We're not here to foreshadow aggressive squash. No, today we're here no. to talk about. Um, while we enjoy our coffee and our Dunkin' Donuts here, uh, we're here to talk about. It's time to do another. Where are they now, Craig? Where are some of those games we reviewed? Uh, so many years ago, are we still playing them? Do we still see them get played? Do we even talk about them anymore? Do we even no, still own setting them? This up, right. Setting this up, um, yeah, we can start. I think your idea is excellent. I think we should just do start doing the where are they now, where are they now. <laughs> right, because some of the where are they nows, it's been so many years since we last did a where are they now, that you could do the where are they now for where are, where are they, now? they now? Right. Where we are they now? Now we won't do that yet. Well, last time we did where a where are, are they now? We ended off with episode one fifty. Yeah. Nice round number. So this time we're going to yep. start off with episode games we renew, reviewed in episode one fifty one, which was yep. back in August of twenty fourteen. That's right? ridiculous. It's so it ridiculous seems that we've like, been doing this so long. I, I know it's it is kind of crazy. And in that episode, we actually talked about two games. That episode we did yes. the Wild West Exodus update. Which is yep. pretty timely because we just had the new guys on who have now taken ownership of Wild West Exodus. Yes, War Cradle Studios Red was Wing. on just a couple episodes ago and to at talk Gen about Con, the new. Yep. At Gen Con, Craig and I played demos and got all excited about the new Wild West Exodus stuff. So I think yeah. uh, that game, I'm sure Craig and I will play at least a few games of it when the new books come out and everything. I mean, the cards are all... We like to wait for the cards to be out, so we're not going to go out and print everything. Yeah, we're not really that. print play kind yeah, of Yeah, so, so when that comes out, though, I'm going to dust off all my figures. I still have them all. Yep. Um, oh, I can't wait to bust out. Uh, um, uh, what is, it's been so long, I don't even remember what I call it anymore. It's got that <laughs> awesome sign. What's yeah. it? Uh, Brimstone. Brimstone, that's yes. Brimstone. So I think that's going to happen. So I would predict we'll have Wild West Exodus back to the table. A game we talked about, did a follow-up on way back in 2014. I think we're going to have that back well, to the table Russ, this year. Yes. I know we generally promise not to do any big stuff here. Right in the in the in the Dunkin' Donuts, no. but I am in possession of some information that actually bears directly Ooh. upon this topic Ooh, that I really have? cannot talk about in what? public. But Why we're you... here in Dunkin' Donuts. Yes, we're here yes. in Dunkin' Donuts among friends, among friends, right? among our most loyal of patrons. Indeed, indeed. So please donuts. don't please don't spread this around. Don't tell anybody. Or I, I, it could cost me greatly. <laughs> I'm not going to give any great detail mm-hmm. because I mm-hmm. I just had a two hour phone mm-hmm. conference over the weekend yes. with War Cradle Studios, who you may remember just acquired all of the Spartan Games IPs. Yes, yes. Except for, and this is scoop number one, mm-hmm. Halo. <laughs> yes, not a surprise. They did not pick up Halo. They draw actually. The, as it. soon as soon as Spartan went into bankruptcy, the license reverted back to Microsoft, Microsoft which so, is not a surprise. Microsoft probably had that yeah, built in there, yeah. Exa- exactly. That was, but generally, that that that's a given that that would right. be built into the contract because Microsoft has armies of lawyers who make sure that kind of thing gets done. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> right. And so, a, a a a very common question that has now been leveled at War Cradle: mm-hmm. Why would you possibly own and run? Two steampunk universe 
uh, uh, IPs. Why would they do why, that, Craig? Why would they why do that? Why would, why would they, they do, do that? that? Well, well, Russ, I'm How just going to give sense? you a very short answer. Uh-oh. They're not going to. Ooh. To me, Worlds that sounds exciting. Collide, Russ. Worlds yes. collide. Worlds are colliding. Worlds expand and collide. That is brilliant. And, and uh, it, it's very, very exciting to the point where there's all kinds of cool stuff coming down the pike. I will tell you, their focus is almost predominantly, uh, almost entirely at the moment, look, talking about the Spartan stuff, on the dystopian wars side of the equation, wow. which turns out to be had to have been the most consistent seller. That's exciting. So this is so so this is basically dystopian wars is merging to form Voltron with Wild West Exodus. Indeed, the universe is of, of Wild West Exodus, which I actually spent the summer working on. There's more stuff that I haven't really talked about. Right. Uh, spent the summer uh, writing the new fluff for Wild West Exodus and expanding the world into uh, Europe and um, and Asia mm-hmm. and uh, a couple other places that so we Japan, focused on. So the Japanese Air Force in dystopian wars will not be converted to some other non-Japanese Air Force. Instead, there are now Japanese Wild West Exodus forces. They will be. Well, it's, don't even think Wild West Exodus because Wild West Exodus happens in a very small area, right? A very. Right geographically speaking right and so that's the the world of wild west exodus if you've read uh any of the novels or any of the short stories um it it, it there are things going on in the rest of the world and mm-hmm. the fluff i mean and the background fluff for the new rule book actually expands on where everything can and it's it's very different from where it was in the first edition i i, I think it's pretty cool where it is now mm-hmm. um but it's different but it is it is much more it's expanded as I said uh, you you learn more about what's happening in in Europe you learn more of what's happening in Asia and now it's kind of folding into uh, the dystopian wars um, world so that it's going to be recognizable from I, whichever direction you're coming from oh that's really cool so it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, there's I'm not gonna give anything else away there there's one faction. All the models are still going to be there. They're actually most of the names of the models are still going to be there. Most of the factions are going to remain where they are. Um, War Cradle believes that the sweet spot is eight factions. Right. And so uh, Spartan Games was nothing if not generous with their faction count. <laughs> so uh, the as was the, Wild West Exodus. To be that's honest, true. Right? That's true. Well, that's actually actually that's very true. Right. So Wild West Exodus saw some groups folded into other groups mm-hmm. to make for eight main factions. Right. And Dystopian Wars is going to see the same. Uh, and so and it's uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be very cool. There is one faction that will be changed completely. And uh, I won't give away which faction that is, but it, there is nothing in the Wild West, even the new revised fluff of Wild West Exodus, that could correspond with one of the particular um, uh, factions. And so that one is going to be adapted and adjusted uh, to what I think is actually at least as cool, if not cooler, than where it's coming from. But other than that, it, like everything's going to be very recognizable. I, I actually am going to start uh, this week writing um for their w- the new website that they're going to when they make all the big announcements and they start launching all the info there's going to be a short story for each faction that that brings them all together and ties them into each other and so, so have they announced this yet or is this like no, a- no they have not oh, this right. is a this is a, yeah don't don't spread this around this is for patrons, patrons info only. only or so we gotta I, have I them back on the fired. show now to talk about all this because this is really yeah super cool. well we, we, I mean, we don't want to break our own rule and have Stuart back, but maybe no. there's somebody over there that we can have. I feel like there's others. And, For those who, yeah, listeners who may not know about our rule, we try to have third chairs only on no more frequently than once a year. So that way we give you guys lots of variety. It kind of forces us to go out and find new folks and not depend on the same old people all the time. Not that we mind having people back because there's so many oh, great we folks. love having Yeah, we love yeah. people back on, but this way it keeps... Plenty of opportunities for new folks to jump into the room. It's more like it's it's too easy for us to do it the other way. Right. It would be. And yeah. uh, and we think it's a better show for you. And, and so we kind of try to force our Because some people like Bonacore would try to come on like every Oh, episode. for the love of God. Just right. Just that, no. that guy. That <laughs> guy. Right. But anyway, um, so yeah. So, so what, exciting, not only Craig. is Wild West Exodus, I think, coming back 
Yeah. Uh, it is. I, I think it's going to come back stronger than it ever was before right. with a lot more support than That's we've seen previously. Exciting. And the new mechanics and are awesome. Expand. So are they going to yeah. update them? I would assume they're going to they're going to tweak the mechanics for dystopian wars. There, as well. well, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know for sure. Well, um, interesting question. I mean, we didn't get into a lot of mm-hmm. the mechanics involved. Um, I do know that uh, it's it's everything that everything you can the, everything you might have right now is mm-hmm. going to be usable in a game mm-hmm. uh, in this new ed- expanded and revised world. Dystopian Exodus. Nope. It's uh, uh well, I'm just I'm not going to uh, uh, <laughs> there's going to be five games in this whole it's wow. going to be a five game sort of like multiverse Bonanza. all happening in the same. That's world. awesome. So, so so this is really cool. And if you think about how good this fit is, I'm just imagining in my head like yeah. the FSA ships, you know, next to the, you know, the Wild West Exodus like Cowboys. And it's like perfect. Right. It's like. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. Uh, I don't know why it did. Was it more obvious when they made the purchase? I didn't even think. I didn't even think of like that. But that's that's really smart. You know, I, I think they might have had that in mind because I oh, yeah. I always thought it was a little awkward that I was involved with two things that were very similar. And ironically, you were involved. Yes, exactly. You were involved on both sides yeah. completely, completely by chance. And yeah, and exactly. now you're like just merge them together, Craig. Come on. Uh, well, it's very fun. meta because they're <laughs> one of their driving. Thing, ideas was we want to have fluff written by you that's about dystopian wars <laughs> so that everybody will look at it and go oh it's dystopian well Craig <laughs> but Craig does Wild West Exodus but you also and wrote some dystopian wars I did and Uncharted I did. Yeah, yeah. I did that's I great. did and Firestorm Armada yes yeah. yes that's really cool so that's exciting so uh, we can so that was so that was a little yeah yeah so who knew that's awesome that just that is yeah and again like keep it Keep it under your hats, guys. Don't be yeah, like, exactly. you know. Keep I mean, it's only going to be a month or two before it's all out there. But right now, just enjoy the knowledge that you share this stuff you and very few it. other people have it. You just heard it from some guy. You don't know where you remember. Exactly. exactly. Remember. Don't even talk about it. Never even mind some guy. No. Just, 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 don't talk just about it Just keep it, it under your hat for a few, no. for a couple no. months. Right. Exactly. Don't, don't be having your D60 button on while you're talking about this. No, that's true. That's right. true. Don't do that either. So that's exciting. But anyway, so so that, so that Wild West Exodus, Russ, what what else did we talk about in episode 151? So Wild West Texas, Resurgence, it's merging, it's morphing, it's exciting. Meanwhile, Disc Wars. <laughs> so oh, we, Disc Wars. We also talked about Disc Wars. Now, Disc Wars, I really like Disc Wars, and I honestly still yep. own my Disc Wars stuff. As do I. It's a fun, quick little game. It's got neat mechanics, and I was enjoying it as my sort of... Um, I don't know if it gave you the exact feel of a fantasy miniature game, no, but it sort but of gave it was you a close taste. enough, though. Yeah, yeah it was close it enough. Gave you a taste, but I feel like a couple things. They didn't go to the rest of the factions fast enough. So no. one. Well, they never. Yeah. Well, they kind of did, but then they didn't. And then, then two, um, Rune Wars now has totally replaced it. In any case, so um, for me, this, the Disc Wars was an interesting idea. It was fun while it lasted, but I. We kind of we played it quite a few. Wow, we played it a few times. Like we did. Uh, I've played it a bunch of times with uh, with Joe and your brother and now Pete. does Reese? Have you tried it with Reese at all? No, because okay. it's. Uh, I mean, we haven't played a lot. Uh, we're getting to we're getting to the point now where I just let Reese choose what we're playing. Right. And uh, so he's got a whole bunch that he likes, and uh, like we just played um, um, Arena Rex mm-hmm. a couple days ago. Uh, and he likes the models and he like he, 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 I don't think he would be as interested in sort of the, the, uh, abstraction of disc oh, wars. Discs. Yeah. So the next episode after 151, this is interesting, uh-huh. Craig. This is another it's interesting. 152 and in episode 152, again, August, 2014. So three years ago, uh-huh. we yeah. talked about Warhammer 40,000 seventh edition. Need. And that's really interesting because this summer we've been all talking about Warhammer 40,000 8th edition. Only 8th edition. A scant three years later. So yes, clearly, uh, GW obviously iterated rapidly on 7th and then right to 8th. Uh, yep. And you've also heard Craig and I both uh, really much more excited about 40K than we've been in a very long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, I have I have played more 8th edition games than I played 7th and 6th combined. Yes. All so right. I would say 40K is definitely, you know, it'll, it because of our history with the game, we'll never not have models. But it would it went to the this is the point where the game is the most 
uh, you know, I'd say Craig is probably your go-to game, uh, miniature game right now. Uh, At, well, other than this Rune and Rune Wars, Wars. Yeah, right, yeah, right. I'd say this so and for Rune. sci-fi, it's definitely replaced. And and yeah. I think for me, I'm still, I, I, it still plays a little bit long for me, but it's it a lot, a lot I like. I love the card system. I love the, you know, the cards for the objectives. I think are brilliant. Uh, I like the simpler rules. I do wish they had some kind of app to manage all the different uh, unit rules because there are so many different unit rules. Uh, so looking them up is a little tricky, and I'm sure they'll figure that out at some point. But it needs man, an army creator. For yeah, sure. it needs something. But 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 uh, that's a minor quibble. Uh, they've I think it's just been a, such an awesome improvement, and the game feels much more modern now. So yeah, Warhammer Forty Thousand. Uh, it's back in a big way this year. I've seen more people talking about it and playing it. Been a long time. It's it's got a huge resurgence in our gaming group. I'm sure listeners are probably seeing it back. So so yeah. So three years later, since seventh edition, which I think a lot of folks felt like GW may have gone too far, um, they've recovered. And eighth edition is a really strong, uh, really strong game. Yep, yep. They definitely we we came back. Yeah, I would say that's that's fair. Yep. So that was August of 2014. That brings us to yeah. September of 2014. Which Not a lot of games. To, no, episode 153, we talked about mm-hmm. that month. Uh, and that was really, uh, that was a Gen Con episode. It came out yep. a little late. So no games in that episode. So then we go right on to episode, uh, that was August. That was another August one. A little long, yep. that's weird. Um, or September. So that was in October of 2014. What do we talk about there, Craig? Do you see it? Uh, no, I, at the I end of it. September wait, was, wait. Also, uh, was also was uh, also extra life. life. So. But then in then in uh, oh, this is an interesting one. So in yeah. episode one fifty four of September okay. twenty fourteen, yes, uh, we had Garrett Wang on from uh, oh Gen yeah, Con. that was yeah. cool. So we actually had a Star Trek actor on the show, which is pretty cool. Yep, Ensign Kim. Um, but we also talked about Gollum Arcana. So this was the mm-hmm. Gen Con twenty fourteen where Gollum Arcana came out. And this was the game that was a hybrid game. Um, it had some really interesting um, artistic-styled models that were like these, meant to be these giant mechanical, sort of magical mechanical golems that little people rode on the backs of, or humans rode on the backs of. Mm-hmm. And what's interesting about this game was there was an app for your phone or tablet, and there was a Bluetooth pen that you would tap onto both parts of the base for different moves of the model and then on the parts of the board to indicate what you were doing where. So it was kind of, it was one of those games post, uh, there was this little fury, flurry of games around this time and a couple of years before where there was this desire to make a hybrid of miniature real world games that also were, did all the mechanics in an app. Right. And this is a lot, I think this is probably the last great attempt at this. Um, and I, I liked it. I actually bought into it. My kids kind of liked it. But after a few plays, it really didn't stand up, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> Neat idea, but you really kind of... Yeah, you went, you went all in at the beginning. Uh, not, at Gen yeah, Con. I bought two sets. and, and What and, they had available, yeah. yeah. And then the following Gen Con, uh, I broke it out again. We played it a few times before we went. My youngest daughter was pretty into it. We went to Gen Con. And the funny thing was, like, the models, we didn't... You know what it was? For me, it was the models. The models didn't no, sing. That, and that no, was the well, they problem. were pre paints and which was yeah. the opposite of Excellus, where Excellus was the models were awesome, but the yeah. game wasn't so good. I feel like this game could have been better if the models were better. So it was, I don't know, but then it now it's falling apart. You can't even buy it anymore, so the game's dead. But it was an interesting mm-hmm. attempt, so I give them points for that. Another, it was another interesting. Yeah. So someday someone's gonna pull it off. Yeah, but I don't think it's been done yet. Uh, now uh, October 2014, we also reviewed. Uh, from one of our favorite game designers, uh, Kurt Covert, mm-hmm. Student Bodies. And this yep. is the zombie high school game. So you're in the high school, you're yep. grabbing parts, and it's the in part the where hallway. You're, you're kind of co-op until one of you figures out the main mission, and then one of you has to try to run out and get out alive while everybody else sort of uh, tries only to Only one person you. can escape. Only one person can escape. I love that mechanic. Craig, have you played this game in a while? No. Um, no I never actually had the, the copy, mm-hmm. so... Um, I mean, I I have I, I have contemplated it, and I almost bought it a couple times because I think it would be a good fit mm. for um, a couple of the the people that I have coming over my house every now and then that aren't really gamer gamers, mm. but they do love uh, zombie stuff and they have a really great sense of humor. Uh, haven't done it yet, but I haven't ruled it out as a, a hopeful uh, potential game for that particular scenario. What about you? I have not either. Um... 
We eventually gave it away at one of our Gen Con events. Um, oh, yeah. I liked the game, but I didn't enough, like it enough to buy it. And I think it's just because I have um, I have burnt out on zombie games, is quite frankly the problem. Um, but I love the mechanics of this game. So if you are a zombie fan, uh, Student Body is still a great game. It just wasn't my particular cup of tea uh, longer term. Right. So that was October 2014. So moving on to November 2014. Mm-hmm. Let's see what was going on that month. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh kid uh, games. Yeah, Black Fleet. So we talked about um, this was I reviewed Black Fleet, which my kids loved. I picked this up at Gen Con in 2014, and it was the surprise game I didn't expect. Black Fleet has a great looking board. It has these little ships, and the ships have little cubes in them. And so you, it's a pickup and deliver game, but you also fight each other. Um, we haven't played this game in about six months, but when it comes out, we, the kids really like it. Uh, it's and it's not really a kids game; it's a very good grown-up game too, and it's it's very easy to play. So if you like pick up and deliver games that aren't too deep and easy to pick up and go with, um, I would still say Black Fleet. If you see it about, um, it was fun. It's a great game, great components. One I liked games. how you could sink people's ships, but they weren't out of the game. They would yes, just sail back just down off back a on. river. Yes, <laughs> it's a really solid game. Um, Probably my, my favorite flavor for a simple game like this. Um, so if you do see Black Fleet floating around, I would grab it. I still have my copy. I, I, I like that. Is it hard to get? I don't I don't think so. I mean, it's um, I don't think so, but I haven't honestly I haven't looked yeah. for it in a while. Let's see. Uh, and then let's see. In, in episode 157, we did not talk about any specific games. We, of course, had Stephen Bonacor was on the show talking about SNL. Oh, you can get it for game. $30 on a Prime. There you go. That's a great deal. That's a great yeah. deal. If you see that game for thirty bucks, grab it. It's really it's it's that it's good. It's very good. Oh. Uh, so November twenty fourteen wasn't much. So now we're on to December twenty fourteen. I think we we talked so long about um, the awesomeness that Craig was revealing. We'll probably just finish it up into December. But um, the last episode of twenty fourteen, we actually now this is an interesting one, Craig. Mm, we this, um, this isn't an interesting. We actually had some folks on from Fantasy Flight, and we talked about Star Wars Armada. Yes. Now, this is really interesting because I really like Armada, mm-hmm. and I can't really explain why I don't play it often. Because I, and in fact, I even picked up the Armada campaign set. So I have the box that gives you the campaign rules and all these oh, yeah? cool events. And I really want to play it with somebody, and I haven't, well, I actually have not asked you, so there's mistake number oh. one, because I'm sure you would right. play me. Mm-hmm. But. Um, our friend Randy Brown, super Star Wars Armada fan, he owns all the stuff. Never played it. Like I, we, you and I played it pretty hardcore. I mean, I got quite a few games in it yeah. before we took a pause. Oh, I painted all my fighters. So why aren't we playing Armada, Craig? What's the problem? Uh, I, you know, I'm gonna go back and explain why I didn't like or what what I don't like about Rune Wars. It's these games where all of your army construction and war gear, and it's a, first of all, it's war gear intensive, right? Like, all your ships have to have upgrades to be competitive. They all have to have different up. It's basically very similar to the engine behind Rune Wars. Yeah, well, Rune Wars, X-Wing, Armada, you, they're, they're very similar. Yeah. yeah, but I think Armada and, and Rune Wars are the closest because you're depending on the size of your ship, you have X number of upgrades available, right, and right, it's yeah. like one per icon that you have. Mm-hmm. And, and all of those are represented by cards. They're not written down anywhere else in the universe unless you... Go to a, like a couple different fan uh, run websites, and so eventually to keep my interest in Rune Wars, I had to do that binder with all those little card pockets. Right. And I think if I did that with Armada, and there was like a, a and, and and like if you wanted to play it, I think that could revitalize my interest in it, where I could take that binder with me. You know, I could take it to school and just flip it up and then look at the different cards. All right, and, all right. I uh, am resolved. I, I need a Craig, right now, yeah. the next time we play a game, we are bringing two games with us. We are bringing Uh-oh. Rune Wars, and we're bringing Armada, and we're going to play a game of each. Really? Sound good? Uh, Why not? I, uh, if it's going to be a small game of each, our time crunches are okay. very difficult well, to get. I want to play Armada. Maybe after the play, we can do okay, one of after each. After the play, I'm going to grab my campaign book. I'm going to read up on the campaign, and you and I are going to play the okay. Armada campaign. Okay. I want to do this. Do they still they still sell our model, right? It's still a thing. They didn't kill it. Oh yeah, it's still okay. a thing. No, 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 no. It's just it, they just announced ships. their In next. Fact, yeah, their their next wave just came out. I'm going to Fantasy Flight right now. I want to see the new hotness. Fantastic. Because now the I mean the new Star Wars movie coming out. They must be having all kinds of new ships coming out. 
But I um, see when I go to my local gaming store, I don't see a lot of Armada stuff. I see X Wing. Oh, it's there. It's there. No, it's there. It's on the other side of that uh, of that um, end cap. Oh, is it? All yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I got I got to check that out. So, what's the new sh- what's the newest ships for Armada right now? I want to look at these. Uh, I think they're on wave. Are they on wave six or wave seven? Oh, see, it's been because what was that? 2015. It was the end of 2014. We're talking about. So, yeah. Show me some Armada. Star Wars. Armada. Yeah. You're... Show me the money. I want to see some new Star Wars Armada ships. Here's the fleet. This is Expansions. fascinating. It is. Fascinating oh, radio for Victory the people who have Star Destroyer. That's old school. Oh, wait, wait. Assault Frigate Mark II. That seems cool. Nebulon B class. Well, they already had those out. Ooh, Gladiator class Star Destroyer. That looks cool. Squadron. Nobody cares about. I mean, Squadrons are no. Gladiator is exciting. A, 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 a lot of the things you're talking about right now are old. The Phoenix. I know. I've, but I never. I don't really oh, have a recent lot of products. Look at the other. The Chimera expansion pack. Ooh, the Profundity. Ooh. The Chimera. Uh, yeah. The whole oh, that's the Grand school. Admiral Thrawn's ship. Rogues and Villains expansion. Oh, I'm all over this. Okay. All right. Good. That's it. We're playing Armada. See, this is why we do this show, because it gets me excited to bring out the old games again, Craig. This is exactly uh, why this episode true. exists. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, thank you for joining us at Dunkin' Do- Dunkin Donuts today. We got through all of 2014, uh, and and we learned all of... We got, you got like a sneak peek at what's happening with, with dystopian wars. Hey, and while was don't get me fired. <laughs> don't. It's, shh. It's a secret. Just say it. Just use a code shh, word. Give, me, give it a couple of months. When you talk to fellow patrons, just come up with a code word for what you heard today and right. not actually. Craig, what's a good code word for this project? Uh, code word would be steam. Oh, that is that is that oh. is terrible. Oh, that is that a lim- terrible code Sturginium. word. Sturginium. Sturginium. Oh, much better. Code word okay. sturginium. There you now, go. now you're talking like a right Yeah. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show helps it grow.